Chapter 55 Library Search Lydia let Zander out of her rucksack again. Good idea, said Zander. I can scout ahead if need be. That was some impressive riddling, Zant, said Jimmy. I hadn't heard that last one before. Not had I, Zander assured him. Luckily, I have an affinity with Lydia. I read her mind. Seeing the look on Lydia's face, he added, It is inherent magic, my dear, to want to track the watcher's gaze. What we're about to do next, mate, Oddie warned. Right, everyone, Lydia addressed them. The safety of every team member is the most important thing. If that means we need to use our wands, then that's not what we do. So far we've managed against everything the Watcher has thrown at us. If anyone's life or health is threatened, we fight back with all we have. Where next, Quinn? Assuming you do not wish to commune with the scholars, we go to find the library, he said. Dev stepped forward. From comments which have been made, Oddie and I think it is fair to assume the library is underground. We also think it's fair to assume it will be guarded, Oddie added. Keep a look out for guards, stairs downward, or fortified doors. Remember, it's possible the scholars will be using the library for their studies. That might give us a clue. We should split up, Dev suggested. He's right, Jimmy agreed. We may not be scary, but we do look mob handed OK, Lydia said. We divide into three teams to search for the library entrance. Then we meet up again. I have to be the one to pick up the token and pass it to someone. Shona's next. Is there anywhere we could gather, Quinn? Oddie asked the wanderer. If you can find your way back to the entrance, Quinn explained, go through the doors facing it. From there you follow a long corridor which takes you to a garden courtyard. We can meet there, but we must be quiet. There will be guards within. They will pay no attention to scholarly humans. Everyone looked at Xander. A beauty has its responsibilities, he admitted. I'll take Oddie and Dean, Lydia said. Freddy, if you'll go with Christine Quinn, thanks. And Dev, could you be with Shona and Jimmy? Dev beamed. How come Dev gets to be in charge of a team? Dean asked. Every team needs someone smart and powerful to lead them, Lydia smiled. That's why I have a team, Christy has a team, and Shona has a team. Three girls, three teams. So I'm not in charge, yay, said Freddy. Dev shrugged. Lead on, Captain Shona. OK, Grunts, follow me, Shona said, grinning. Maybe I should have Xander, Christy said. Seeing as I'm herding cats anyways. I'd like Xander to be near me, Lydia said, but casting around as only he can. They set off in three different directions. Xander peeled off from Lydia's team to hunt for clues to the library entrance. Once the other two groups had disappeared, Freddy had an idea. Christy, why don't we go to the garden and wait for the others there? He suggested. Freddy, man, you really are hopeless, Christy sighed. No, listen, Freddy insisted. The garden's more central, and there'll be more scholars there, and scholars are weirdos who like libraries, so maybe they'll mention where the library is. Or one might say, Ooh, I'm just going to the library for a scroll, or whatever, and we can follow them. The notion is not without some merit, Christy, Quinn urged. And if we bumble around looking for clues, I'll only do something stupid, or get us arrested, or get lost, and Quinn will just wander like he does. Freddy added. Christy gave a deep sigh. Ah, <sighs> oh, bugger. Maybe I can leave the two of yous there and go off on my own. It'll be like a crash for the naughty kids. Want me to get yous a colouring book while your mam goes off and does all the work? No, Freddy complained, aggrieved by her tone. I haven't brought any crayons. Ah, oh, come on then, soft lad, Christy said in resignation. Freddy had just wanted to go for a sit down. He didn't know where to search for a hidden library, but now that he'd made the excuse they might uncover a clue in the garden, he felt excited. He had thought of somewhere to begin, and it was a good idea. Not only was he the Grand High Priest of the Mandala of Doom, but he was clever as well. Everyone would be glad he was with them because he was going to find the clue. Quinn showed them to the corridor he had mentioned. 
Freddy had expected a dark, boring corridor, almost like being back in the caves again. But this was lovely. It reminded him of the time his mum and dad had taken him to the muggle parts of London on a shopping expedition. They had gone to an arcade full of sparkly, shiny shops. There had been a vaulted glass ceiling which had flooded the arcade with light. It had filled him with a feeling that the muggles had a magic of their own. This corridor had the same effect. The walls were of white stone, the floor of coloured mosaic tiles. Rows of windows high overhead, below the arch of the vaulted ceiling, let in sunlight. The pale stone glowed with the sun's rays. They passed many doors along the corridor. Each had a sign in red and gold to one side. The writing looked runic. Freddy was not good with runes. Quinn could read them, though, he discovered. None of them mentioned a library. Coming out into the open air of the garden courtyard, it surprised Freddy how shaded it seemed. Trees spread like parasols overhead. Raised beds of flowers adorned the area. Water features sparkled while they caught the sunlight. Here and there, people sat alone or in small groups on the stone benches, reading or discussing scrolls of rough paper. This is nice, said Freddy. Christy, Freddy and Quinn found an unoccupied bench and sat together. Two groups of scholars were in earshot. This made it difficult for them to talk openly, but easier for them to overhear potential clues. Do you want to go off and search, Christy? Freddy whispered. Nah, might as well stay and listen with you, she sighed. If I leave you alone, you'll only get arrested or start a fire or something. Oh, ye of little faith, Freddy teased. I have complete faith in your ability to cause havoc, Fredster, guess she corrected. And I don't think Quinn is far behind you in that respect. Quinn held up two thumbs, something Jimmy had taught him to do. It was possible he didn't understand the gesture. They couldn't be sure. They sat in silence and listened to the scholars discussing the history of places they had not known existed, and the philosophies of influential teachers of whom they had never heard. Freddy turned to his companions to raise the question that was uppermost in his mind. Are there any toilets round here, Quinn? I need a wee... Christy tutted. The vagabond pointed to one of the many doors leading from the courtyard. Freddy grinned and left them. The toilet area was like all such facilities in Shakika. It reminded Freddy of a piggery he'd once seen at a petting farm. It was a simple rectangular room sectioned off into pens by waist-high walls. The plumbing system was a hole in the floor of each pen, and a servant who occasionally came with a bucket of water. The air was fragrant, but not in a good way. Freddy found an empty stall. Two scholars were holding a conversation over one of the low walls. The library is very jittery today, the first scholar remarked. Freddy's attention zoomed in on the word library. He didn't look, as that was not what you did in such a place. Jittery? asked the second. Yes, I approached one of the ziggurat doors. It would not let me in. There was just a blank wall two steps inside, said the original scholar. It does that occasionally, his fellow replied. So I went to the other, the first continued. It was the same. Oh, the other remarked. Does that mean the library's closed? Now I returned to the previous door. It opened straight onto the stairs, which is also unusual. It is. There's generally a corridor before the stairs. Do you think this portends? Feeling he might overstay his welcome, and having heard all he needed, Freddy zipped up and left. He washed his hands in the first water feature he passed in the garden. Quinn? he asked as soon as he reached the others. What's a ziggurat? Ah, oh, come on. You should know this, Freddy, man, Christy mocked. It's one of them early pyramids. Stepped sides rather than smooth. Why do you inquire, Fredlington? Quinn asked. The library is through one of two ziggurat doors, he beamed in triumph. But it sounds as though the way to the library after you've gone through the door changes, like the stairs at school. We should find the doors before the others get back, Christy said, so we can get a move on when they do. Quinn stayed on the bench in case their friends arrived. Freddy and Christy set off to find the ziggurat doors. Freddy found one to the left of the garden, as seen from the entrance. 
It was a plain wooden door with a rope handle, like most in Chiquica. The stone lintel of the door was a low-stepped triangle, a broad ziggurat. Freddy jumped up and down on the spot and did a little dance. He looked around for Christy. Between the trunks of two trees, he saw she had found the other, at the other side of the courtyard, almost opposite his door. When Lydia arrived at the garden courtyard, both the other teams were there before hers. The six of them beamed at her. So, she asked. It's a miracle, Christy said in a soft voice. Not only did Freddy work out that this would be a grand place to listen out for clues from the scholars, he also found the doors to the thing we were seeking. Freddy did, Dean asked. Yeah, uh, Freddy assured him. Turns out I am useful after all. Freddy, you've always been useful, Lydia told him, grinning with relief. It's just not as predictable with you as it is with everyone else, Freddy finished her sentence. I was going to say, as it is with people with particular skills, Lydia corrected, then admitted, which is pretty much everyone else. But you're like our secret weapon. Aye, weapon, that's the word I've been looking for, said Christy with a grin. Where was Lord Sander? Quinn asked. In the usual place, Lydia said with a nod to her rucksack. Freddy, can you show us the way? Are we all going? Dev asked. It might look like an invasion if we're all together. I think you, myself, Freddy, with the mandala, and Odysseus, said Lydia. It would be torture for Oddie not to go to a library. The rest of you can stay here and relax. Who knows what's coming next? Freddy led Lydia, Oddie and Dev to the door he had discovered. My research suggests that what we find behind the door isn't always the same, Freddy told them. Sometimes it's blocked, sometimes it's stairs, sometimes it's a corridor. I think it's magic, and I think it's the magic that's been stopping the mandala from showing the next token. That sounds likely, Dev agreed. Let's go inside and see what we find, Oddie suggested. It's too bright out here to consult the mandala. Freddy pulled on the rope door handle. The door opened without a sound. Inside, they found a corridor. Looks good so far, Freddy said. My research indicated that we need to find stairs leading down. Closing the door behind them, they saw the corridor was lit by small lanterns hanging from hooks in the ceiling. Can you check the mandala, or do you have to go to sleep first? Dev asked. No, it's already kind of activated from last night. So yeah, I can consult it. He swung the rucksack from his shoulder and pulled out the mandala. It had assumed its bowl shape and would not move to any other form. Inside was a white mist. He's still showing the same misty floof, Freddy moaned. You feeling any pull from it, Lids? Lydia stopped and thought for a moment. Sort of. It's... Vaguely downwards, I think, or all around. Not sure. But it definitely feels closer than before. I'm convinced we're on the right track. They followed the corridor. They turned a couple of corners, then descended a flight of stairs. After three more turns, there were more stairs, leading upward again. This doesn't feel right, Oddie observed. Perhaps we should backtrack. Freddy mentioned the path was not always the same, said Dev. We are expecting it to be logical. There is magic at work here. I have an idea. One of us should go back and see if it is still as we experienced it. The rest should wait here. I'll go, Oddie volunteered. I'll just nip to check if the stairs which brought us down here are still in the same place. Don't be long. It was rare for Odysseus Anderson to be mistaken, but this last statement was incorrect. After much longer than it should have taken for him to find the stairs, Lydia called out, Oddie! Are you there? There was no reply. 